Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to do an introduction to radical functions. So in this video, we're really just defining radical functions by using the concept of inverses. So specifically, our motivation is that we want to apply the concept of inverses to quadratic functions. In doing so, let's just start with the most basic quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. Another thing we might call this is the parent function for quadratics. So this is sort of our most basic example of a quadratic function that we can use. So if we have this as our function, in order for it to have an inverse, it's going to need to be a one-to-one -one function. But right now, this isn't a one-to-one -one function. There are many outputs that have multiple inputs. Really, basically, every output except for zero has multiple inputs. So what we're going to need to do is to make this a one-to-one -one function in order to do the inverse. And to make this happen, we're going to do something called restricting the domain. So what this means is we just take a portion of the inputs and look at that function and see if that function's one-to-one. -one. So here, our original domain was negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers, and our range was zero to infinity. So what I'm going to do is just take part of the domain in order to make this one-to-one. -one. So I'm seeing if that we only had the left side of the graph, then every output has only one input, or if we only had the right side of the graph, then every output has only one input. So technically we could choose either, but our standard convention is to choose the right side of the graph or all of the inputs greater than or equal to zero. So what we're going to do is just take that right side of the graph. And now this new function passes both the vertical and the horizontal line tests. And so it's one to one. All of these outputs now have only one input. So here we'd say the restricted domain is from zero to infinity and the range is from zero to infinity. Okay, so we've fixed our function, our quadratic, so that it's one to one, and now we can find the inverse. So we say that the inverse of f of x equals x squared on the restricted domain of zero to infinity is the function f inverse of x equals square root of x. So this is the square root of our input x, and we call this a radical function. So that symbol that represents the square root, that's a radical symbol, and so this is a radical function. So in the previous video, we show that this is in fact the inverse for x squared by doing the composition of f and f inverse, but I wanna show you this now a second way by simply swapping the inputs and the outputs. So remember, inverse functions, take the outputs of the original and tell us which inputs they came from. So it's effectively swapping the input and the output values. So if we start with our original function, let's make a table of some values we know, and then we'll swap them for the inverse. So for my original function on this restricted domain, I see that we have 0, 0, we have 1, 1, we have 2, 4, 3, 9, and then we could also have 4 and 16, which isn't on the graph here, but we know that 4 squared is equal to 16. Now, when we take the inverse, this is going to swap the inputs and the outputs. So we're just going to take these columns and swap them. So my new inputs are 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16, and the new outputs are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these should work for our radical function as what is actually happening here. So if the inverse function is the square root of x, then we should be taking all of these inputs and taking their square root. So the square root of zero is zero, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, and the square root of 16 is four. So the square root is exactly what undoes that squared that we started with. Then if we go to graph this, we should be able to put in these new points. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, and 16, 4. And so our radical function has this shape here that goes through these points. It has a domain from 0 to infinity and a range from 0 to infinity. So square root of x is my parent function for radical functions. This is the most basic shape it takes.
Now, before we close, I just want to make a couple comments about radical functions. So you'll notice here that the inputs of square root of x cannot be negative. So that comes from how it's defined when we restrict the domain of x squared. So the inputs of square root of x can't be negative. We can input 0 to the square root of x or any positive value, but we can't take a negative value. Then this also means that the outputs of square root of x are always positive. So when we do square root of a number, it's always going to be a positive value and not a negative one with the way that we've defined it here. Then the last thing I just want to mention is that you might see the square root of x written as x to the one half power. So that's just another way to write the same thing, but we often see it with this radical symbol as square root of x. And all right, so that is the really basic introduction to where radical functions come from. They are defined as the inverse of quadratics when we restrict the domain appropriately. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.